Matter is TPLF's carnage and destruction, challenging the right to life. Greetings, I'm Tabitha John. In today's episode, we will examine how and why terrorist TPLF maneuvers embedded values of Ethiopians by committing heinous crimes. Destructive mentality is its characterization. Its aim is robbing and looting all resources in Ethiopia at the expense of Ethiopians, and its goal is to disintegrate the country. Do stay with us. Civilians killed, property looted and destroyed, women and girls as young as 14 raped, farmlands obstructed and cattle put down. This is the legacy of the terrorist group, the so-called Tigray People's Liberation Front or TPLF. In July and August of last year, this group wages war in Amhara and Afar regions. These months were a critical time for farmers who were ready to sustain their life while farming plots of land they have. Suddenly, when the terrorist TPLF wages war, their life has totally been disrupted. They can't defend themselves. Hence, human and material losses were unspeakable. It was by plan when this terrorist group invades, economically putting them at the verge of death while looting their cattle, hence they couldn't farm and were forced to be IDPs. Socially, their social bondage has also been totally weakened and their way of life changed. Productive societies will be changed into consumptive as well. Terrorist TPLF was well aware of the fact that farming and harvesting times was precious for people with sedentary life. Where surplus production is a brutal fact, yet TPLF wants to demolish those chances. As a result, this group came until North Shoah of Amhara Regional State, killing, raping civilians, distracting and looting their properties. Victims were traumatized and couldn't recover from the damages they suffer. Back in August this year of 2022, the Amhara Regional State had released a statement saying the terrorist TPLF had been committing ethnic-based attacks, massacres on the Amhara people, and looted and vandalized properties of the people. The statement also indicated that the terrorist group had inflicted 288 billion bird damage on facilities and infrastructures of the region during its last invasion. But it doesn't stop there. The Afar regional state had also accused the terrorist group of continued atrocities towards the people of the region, killing children, women and elderly, and destroying many public and religious institutions in the region. The TPLF is a force of destruction. If not directly killing civilians, it creates circumstances under which survival is made impossible. For instance, going back to February of the previous year, 2021, it was reported by the Ministry of Agriculture that the terrorist TPLF had destroyed crops that covered over 1.5 million hectares of farmlands in Amhara and Afar regions. To make matters worse, the soldiers of the group also looted and vandalized agricultural equipment, supplies and cattle aimed at impoverishing farmers and pastoralists in those regions. This terrorist group, known by its cruel acts targeting civilians, especially farmers, and wedges war on the eve of the farming season. Farming and harvesting time is vital for them to sustain life, which TPLF wants to disrupt. It slaughters and loots their cattle and resources, destroys their properties, which eventually put farmers at bay. Terrorist TPLF chooses this time having an intention to evict civilians and forced to leave their residence. This has also an implication which totally disrupts their social and economic bondage. 
Now, it is known that agriculture is not only the backbone of the Ethiopian economy, but is also a major means of survival for the livelihood and overall survival of many communities in Ethiopia, thereby making the destruction of the TPLF the start of a poverty reign that would eventually end the lives of innocents. In any armed conflict, the right of the parties to choose the methods and means of warfare is not unlimited. On the contrary, those choices are strictly regulated by the customs and provisions of the law of armed conflict, referred to as international humanitarian law. Under international humanitarian law, intentional attacks on civilians or attacks that do not distinguish between military targets and civilians are prohibited under all circumstances. However, terrorist TPLF has shown utter disregard for fundamental rules of international humanitarian law, which all warring parties must follow. As Sarah Jackson, Deputy Regional Director for East Africa, the Horn and the Great Lakes at Amnesty International put it, evidence is mounting of a pattern of Tigrayan forces committing war crimes and possible crimes against humanity in areas under their control in the Amhara region from July 2021 onwards. This includes repeated incidents of widespread rape summary killings and lootings, including from hospitals. Terrorist TPLF has even shown disregard to the very people its nomenclature implies to be liberating, the people of Tigray. There have been various accounts on which the terrorist group has diverted aid directed towards the civilians of the region who are still facing dire conditions propelled by the war that the TPLF is perpetrating. And not to mention the continued use of child soldiers. Blinded by the power that it desperately hopes to attain, the terrorist organization is pilfering and destroying every territory it sets foot in, arising the question, how can a credible force that wants to assume power commit all these brutalities which equate it to a terrorist force? Terrorist TPLF, as clearly tested in the passage of time and situation, can't exist without conflict. This is a brutal fact. This emanates from the fact that unable to understand the existing situation in Ethiopia. Its powerhouse and software were still in 1970s and 1980s. Their mentality failed to understand where Ethiopia and Ethiopians are currently heading. Their aspiration still resonates on the idea of Napoleon Bonaparte. He reiterates, power grows from the barrel of a gun. But civilized mind thinks and dreams of giving priority for humanity, transcending self, egos, and slaughtering civilians, which is TPLF's nomenclature. Currently, this same group has announced, as it is willing for a peace talk, stipulating many preconditions after continuous disregard towards peace efforts made by the Ethiopian government. Be that is as it may, while this is a positive development in the face of the two-year-long hostility, the announcement came after the TPLF had reflared fighting last month for the first time in months, overstepping a humanitarian truce, looting 570,000 liters of oil and starving Tigrayan people. Terrorist TPLF's self-contradictory approach lacks sincerity and has no positive track record so far in solving issues through discussion. Its current move is to have a grace period for yet another war and wants to exploit the chance of resurfacing again. Bandit's TPLF top officials want to appease their masters and prolong their power whereby Tigrayan youths are at the battlefield. On the contrary, their children were in Europe and America enjoying a luxurious and lavish life. Enough is enough. 
Ethiopians are aware of TPLF's behavior and alert enough to see the coffin of TPLF and flourishing of Ethiopia over their dead body. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up this segment of ETV World. Make sure to follow and subscribe to our social media for more captivating content circling on national, continental and international issues.